Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, we're going to be talking about the Orlando Magic, who are one of the most fun young teams in the league at the moment. And they've been pretty underrated over this recent stretch of games. They're on a four-game win streak at the moment. They've had one of the best offenses in the league over that four-game stretch. And additionally, they just put up 135 points on the Atlanta Hawks. And basically, all of this is being done by their young core, because that's basically all they have there in Orlando. And two guys in particular, I want to show love to in this video who I think have the potential to be one of if not the single best front court duo in the NBA in a few years time. That duo is Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner. We're going to go into what makes each of them so individually great and why they work so well as a duo and where I see their careers going down the line. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos and let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's go ahead and start with Paolo Bancaro. On the season, Paolo is averaging 21.7 points per game, first amongst all rookies. 6.9 rebounds per game, second amongst all rookies, and 3.9 assists per game, third amongst all rookies, while shooting 55.4 true shooting percentage, fourth amongst all rookies. So basically, he's very clearly the rookie of the year. There are some guys like Benedict Matherin who still have somewhat of a case, but at the moment, I think it's very clearly Paolo because he is dominating basically every rookie category. It was pretty clear coming into the draft that Paolo was going to be highly polished and NBA ready from day one, which is exactly what he's been, and it was a big reason why Orlando on draft day, decided, you know, let's not go with Jabari Smith, let's instead go with Bancaro, who just seemed like the safest pick. It felt like the natural option for most people. And he's made all those people look like geniuses because he has not only played well, but he's exceeded basically everybody's expectations. He's having a historic rookie campaign. To put it into some perspective, Paolo right now is averaging 21.7 points per game, which if it holds over the course of the whole year, would be the third most points per game scored by a rookie in the last 26 years. The only guys he'd be behind are Zion Williamson and Blake Griffin. In the case of Blake Griffin, he maybe has a Hall of Fame case, while Zion seems to potentially be building one at the moment. This is even more impressive when you consider the fact that he's doing this on above league average efficiency, which is tough for a rookie, especially in today's league where players are more skilled than ever. When you come in as a rookie, I feel like most people just don't expect league average efficiency or better. It's kind of just do what you've got to do, especially when you're Paolo, who's put into the immediate spot of number one option on Orlando, who isn't the most talented team in the world, while they are are in a four game win streak they still have some supporting pieces that they need to add to make the game a bit easier for their stars but right now Paolo has stepped in as the number one option basically doing a bit of everything and showcasing a highly versatile skill set he can bully his way to the rim and finish at a high level once he gets there he can hit fadeaway jumpers mid-range jumpers pull-ups cut to the basket basically anything you need him to do really his only weakness in his game right now is his ability to shoot the three ball which I do think will come along at some point one of Paolo's biggest strengths is his ability to dominate guys in isolation. If we take a look at his b-ball index ratings, basically all of his one-on-one -on -one categories, he's in the top 25 to 20 percent of the league once again as a rookie, which is just incredibly impressive. He's able to use a unique combination of skill, handle, strength, speed, and size as a bigger player at the power forward position to just make defenders unable to guard him. And once again, he is still on a rebuilding squad. Once he plays more and more years in the league and develops and grows in combination with the fact that the Orlando Magic will continue to put better role players around him as they work towards competing, he's only going to get better and better over the years. Paolo is also top 15% in the league in terms of finishing talent, meaning that when he gets to the rim, he's able to finish, create an opportunity, whether he has to switch up his angle, reverse, whatever he's got to do, Paolo is going to put the ball in the basket. He's also a better ball handler than most fours, a better playmaker than most fours. While he hasn't been phenomenal defensively, he shows flashes of being a high-level defender that I think will one day come to fruition. I can throw numbers, stats, and clips at you all day, but I don't think I have to do too much in particular to convince you that Paolo is going to be an all-star someday. He could be one, in fact, maybe even like next season, and one day I think he'll be an all-NBA player, maybe perennially. That's how talented Paolo is. He's been dominant so far, impressed basically everybody, and I don't think there's many holes in his game right now already as a rookie. Paolo is just going to continue to get better and better and continue being the centerpiece of this Magic team. But alongside him, we also need to think about Franz Wagner, who has star potential of his own. Franz may be the single most underrated player in the entire league right now. 
On the season, Franz is averaging 19.9 points per game, 4.1 rebounds, and 3.6 assists on 59.6 true shooting percentage. He was so slept on in his rookie season, should have gotten way more love for rookie of the year, and he continues to be slept on in his sophomore season. He's an incredibly versatile near 20 point per game scorer, yet you hear nobody talk about him as maybe one of the future stars of this league, despite being only 21 years old and in his second season. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about him for everyone else. Starting with his scoring, Franz is in the upper echelon of efficiency in basically all of b-ball index's metrics he's a high level shot creator and shot maker although his shot quality is towards the bottom of the league meaning that while he gets really tough looks he still manages to convert Defenses are throwing a lot at Franz, but it really doesn't phase him. He still is able to get to the spots that he needs to and knock down shots basically whenever he wants. When the Magic put more supporting talent around him and Paolo, that shot quality number is only going to continue to go up, making him even more efficient than he already is. And as you saw, he's already pretty dang efficient. Franz is also able to get to the rim and finish at a high level. He can knock down threes. He's a great cutter to the basket. He basically does everything, especially when you consider the fact that despite being a second year player, he's already pretty solid defensively. Franz is a really solid on-ball defender, off-ball he's been getting better and better, he's able to get in passing lanes too, and just continuously disrupting the flow of the offense. He's a very smart player as well, making a lot of the right reads and decisions, and he doesn't really make the mistakes you'd expect from a second-year player that has as much responsibility as he does. Franz is also asked to both play and guard a variety of positions. According to Basketball Reference, he has played minutes at shooting guard, small forward, and power forward this season, and he's 6'10", able to somehow play the two when the Magic need him to do so, and they've been plagued by injuries to their guard rotation all season, so Franz has stepped up in a big way and been productive in any of those roles while also playing great defense on whoever's in front of him. So basically, there's really nothing Franz can't do. He's incredibly versatile, whether you need him offensively to go ahead and get you a bucket, you need him to be that second option next to Paolo Bancaro, you need him to cut to the basket, you need him to stand out in the three-point line and knock down looks, come off screens, wrap arounds, handle the ball. Franz can do all of that. Defensively, do you need him on ball? Do you need him helping off? Off ball. What do you need him to guard? Do you need him to guard a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, a center? He could do a little bit of everything at a pretty decent level. Franz is just so well-rounded and versatile, I don't know why he doesn't get talked about more. So clearly, these two are already high-level individual players, but things get even scarier when you consider them as a duo. Paolo is a high-level, ball-dominant scorer that can get you a bucket from basically anywhere, and having a guy in Franz alongside him who is a perfect second option. He doesn't need the ball in his hands at all to make an impact, not that Paolo does in particular, but you can let Paolo be that number one option, be your primary guy, while Franz plays off of him, and in minutes where Paolo's not on the court, Franz is perfectly capable of taking over a lot of that scoring duty, doing it efficiently, handling the ball, basically a little bit of everything. Additionally, if Paolo's three-point shot comes around like I think it will, he becomes even more dangerous off ball, allowing Franz to also get some reps if, say, teams are throwing like a double at Palo or he's kind of having a bad shooting night. This allows them to be really versatile and make a ton of on-the-fly decisions and change up their offense basically whenever they need to. I think they both absolutely have all-star potential, and in the case of Paolo, I think he will be an all-NBA player someday. Franz, I'm a little bit more hesitant to say so, but I do think he will be of an all-star caliber at least. And if you can get an all-NBA and an all-star, maybe even eventually all-NBA caliber player in those two drafts, you have had an incredible run in terms of picking up talent, which is exactly what the Magic have done. Because not only in addition to Paolo and Franz, you have like Wendell Carter Jr. in the front court, but Markel Fultz has been playing great when he's come back. Jalen Suggs has shown some signs of improvement, and they'll still be in the lottery this upcoming season. Imagine if they somehow get a Victor Wembanyama or a Scoot Henderson to pair alongside Franz and Paolo. Things are only going to get even scarier from that point, and they will have one of the most dangerous young cores in recent NBA history. All of that to say, look out for the Orlando Magic and these two guys in particular, because they're about to take the league by storm in a few seasons. I appreciate y'all watching. Make Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. Comment down below letting me know when you think the Magic will win their next championship. Will it be with Paolo and Franz? Will this era be a failure? And who will they end up getting in this upcoming draft? Let me know all of that down below. Appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.